Okay, so in this demonstration, uh, we're going to move on from our last one where we ended up having a page with a menu button and the navigational list below it is going to be toggled on and off with that menu button. But right now the menu list is hidden, so we're going to add some JavaScript to make that menu more graceful. Let's uh, talk about the problem real quick. Now that uh, we hid the menu, it's inaccessible on all screens. The solution is that we need to add that JavaScript to show and hide that navigational list. So the first step is that we have to go get the jQuery library. We could use other types of JavaScript, but jQuery is a very handy library. Um, we've used it before, and we're going to go a little bit more into the writing of it this time, but you need to go ahead and download that jQuery library, and I'm going to do that real quick. So if I go to that link that was on the screen a second ago, I can right click um, this uh, download compressed production version and I'm going to go to save link as and I'm going to choose to save it in my exercise 5 JS folder that I already created. Go back to our discussion. So you should end up with something that looks like this with uh, the jQuery file inside that JS folder. Okay, so this is the first part of that JS menu solution. We need to add the JavaScript to the HTML, but first, before we do that, let's think about what we want it to do. We'll start by looking at, at the HTML structure. This is a screen grab of our actual code. So the menu link can be the clickable button to toggle the list open and closed. Okay, on line 13, that's the menu button. All right, so you might be wondering where the main nav href will take us. As I mentioned before, we haven't created that section yet, but we're going to make it later, and it's going to have a non-JavaScript menu solution. Right now, don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, the other part of that is in that menu button, we have an ID that equals menu. Okay, that's really important. We have to target the menu link as a button in the JavaScript. So we need to use its ID uh, in the name all right, for the JavaScript. Uh, in this case, we're calling it menu. And also, uh, we need to identify a strategy for showing and hiding the navigation list. So we can make the normal state of the menu to be closed. And when the menu is pressed, it can open up. Um, and an effective way to show and hide is by using JavaScript to swap out classes of uh, an element when it's clicked, where one class is set to display none while the other is set to display block. This is, okay, this isn't something that, by the way, you actually put into your HTML. I just want you to compare on the left and the right. This is what is going to end up happening on the fly, dynamically, in the browser, whenever JavaScript does what we're going to tell it to do in a little bit. Basically, it's going to add another class to the class attribute. So if you look on the right side, you see class equals nav closed, and then there's a space, and that says nav open. And that nav open is going to override the display none that we set to um, nav closed, and it's going to basically tell it to display as block. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. This is the first thing that you're going to do. Go ahead and uh, just above the body tag, you're going to go ahead and put your um, JavaScript library in. So let's let's do that really quickly. So I'm back in Komodo, and I'm going to go down, uh, right, just, I said, just above the body tag. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put my script tag in there. Here, let's close this up a little bit. And what this is going to do, uh, as you probably remember from before, is it loads the entire jQuery library. And this has to come before any other jQuery is executed. Now, in the past, what we'd done is we'd put this at the very top, and like up here in the, um, in the head. And we could do that with this library, and that would be OK. But um, for right now, let's just keep it down here, because a lot of the other stuff is going to happen down below. Uh, all of the other content and there's some different ways that you can deal with JavaScript one is that you can put it up inside of the head and if you do that it's going to require that that JavaScript loads before the rest of the page so if you have a lot of heavy JavaScript in there then it means that it might take the rest of the content a lot longer to load so if a lot of what you're actually doing with the JavaScript is really not something that is absolutely immediately important 
So sometimes a better strategy is to load it down at the very bottom of the page so that you don't have weird jumps and weird, uh, you know, like when the CSS doesn't load fast enough or when the pictures don't load fast enough or the words don't come on the screen fast enough because your JavaScript is taking so long. So we're going to stick it down here. Okay. And um, then the next thing is that we are going to uh, go ahead and put another script tag underneath that library that we just loaded and <clears throat> we're going to tell it that it's a type of JavaScript but it's going to be empty. We're not going to tell it to go look for a file. This is going to prepare the browser to know that JavaScript is coming and we're going to put the code inside that we that we want to use. So let's go ahead and we're going to do that. And um, now we need to put stuff inside of it. Okay, so what we're going to start with is this thing called the document ready function. And basically, this is one of the most commonly used things in jQuery. And basically what it does is it looks to make sure that the page is loaded and that it's ready to go. Um, excuse me, that the all the JavaScript libraries have loaded and that it's ready to go before it starts trying to utilize those JavaScript functions. And so... Um, and there's a link down at the bottom here um, that you could go visit um, and read more about the document ready function. And I actually recommend that you take a look at it. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, start using this. And I'm going to actually type some of this stuff so that you can kind of see the syntax. So we start with a dollar symbol. Um, and what we're going to do is in the first set of parentheses, we are going to type the word document. And then it's going to afterwards put a dot, and then it's ready, okay. And then that's the dot document dot ready function, okay, where you say you're you're declaring the document, and then checking to see that it's ready. Uh, and what's going to happen is inside of these two parentheses next to ready, we're going to put a function inside of that. Okay, so that when that document is ready, then go ahead and do the following thing. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to type function. We're going to create a function like this so that we can see what's going on. But what you have to do after function is you have to open it up with a curly brace and then you have to end it with a curly brace. So this is the syntax to get started right now. So we're saying dollar symbol and in parentheses document and then dot ready. And in the parentheses we have, well, we have an open parenthesis and we have the word function with open and close parenthesis because we're saying, okay, now run a function and we're creating this function. And then we open it with a set of curly braces. Okay. And then you have to close the curly brace and then you close this parenthesis, and you see as I'm touching these things in Komodo Edit, it's highlighting the the opening and closing mate, or mates, I should say. And then the last thing is this terminator, sort of like what we have in CSS. It's a semicolon. Okay, so now it's saying, all right, when the document's ready, run the, the following function. All right, so this is what we want to do uh, to prepare for the menu clicking. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is what we're going to run inside of that document ready function and basically we're creating another function that is going to be clickable on the menu ID. So basically it's saying on click that's essentially what this means um, is that when you click that menu ID we're going to run a function. Okay so when the document is ready you, you're able to run a function that allows you to click the menu and then when you click the menu you're running another function. That's essentially what the syntax is saying. Okay, So take a good look at that and make sure that you type the syntax correctly. And by the way, I don't remember, I don't expect you to remember how to do this by rote. This is just sort of your introduction to it. Okay, so we jump back to Komodo Edit and I'm going to paste it to, for the sake of time. and. Um, I want you to look at this, okay, as I said before, inside of the first parenthesis set is uh, the ID of menu, and that's basically looking through the CSS file, and it's saying, okay, uh, or excuse me, it's looking through the HTML file, but it, it's recognizing it by a, a hash mark because it knows that that's how in CSS you delineate an ID. So anytime it sees the ID menu, and you have to, by the way, put this in quotation marks 
So you see that there are quotes inside of these parentheses. Um, anytime it sees the ID of menu and it sees that there is a clicking action, it's going to run a function. So inside of here is where we want to put our next, uh, our next thing that's going to happen when it's clicked. Okay, so here's what we're going to end up putting inside of it is another thing that says basically um, when menu is clicked, we're going to toggle a class so that we're changing, we're basically toggling a class, meaning we're adding a class to the nav element. And it, specifically, it's the nav element that already has a class of nav closed. And then we'll, later, we're going to add a CSS rule that's going to like do the whole hiding and showing thing. Okay, so let's add that. I'm just going to paste this here so that uh, you don't have to watch me type. Okay, and let's save this. And I'm not doing anything yet with the classes. Now I just want to go and inspect it. So let's go and check it out in a browser. And all we're looking at right now is to make sure that JavaScript is doing what we expect it to do. So don't click on this menu button. Just right click it and then say inspect element. And what it's going to do is jump to the button itself. But what I want you to do is go one up where it says nav class equals nav closed. Okay. And then what we're going to do while you have that highlighted, I want you to pay attention in the lower left quadrant or wherever you have your ins element inspection. While nav class uh, equals nav closed is highlighted, I want you now to click on that menu button and see what happens. Notice that it's toggling and it's adding a class of nav open. And when I click menu again, it removes it. That's what the toggle is doing. It adds the class, removes the class, adds it, removes it, and so on. So if we have nav closed as a hidden class, okay, then it's going to be hidden, whereas when we toggle it and add the open um, class that's going to show it, then it's going to show it, okay? So let's take a look at doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the styles that are going to fix that, and what I'm going to do is come over here into my style sheet, and right here we've got our nav rules. There's nav, there's nav closed, I want to actually go down where it says nav list because that's effectively what we're dealing with. If you look at our HTML, what we're trying to show and hide is not the entire actual nav. What we're actually trying to show and hide is the list that's inside of it. I'm going to paste some rules and I'm going to put it underneath where it says nav list. And here are the new rules that I just pasted, line 66 through 76. And the first one is saying that we're going to make the nav list that is inside of nav, nav closed. We're going to tell it to be display none. If we don't have these other ones, then it's not going to actually show it as open. We have to go ahead and tell nav open to have an opposite choice. Now, basically what's happening is that um, originally we have the nav closed up here. We have the overflow set to hidden. So no matter what, if we don't change nav open whenever it basically comes into being, whenever we click the JavaScript, if we don't change it to visible, then we're not going to see our changes anyway. So we need this rule to make sure that we're overriding that overflow hidden from earlier. And then we can make our uh, visible rule where we say that the nav list that's inside of nav open will be display block. And these background colors are just ones that I already went ahead and put in. It could be anything. You don't have to have that yet, but you're going to want to style that. So let's save this. And I'm going to go ahead and preview. Okay, so far so good. Oh, and let's, before I click this, let's go ahead and we're going to inspect the element and make sure that we're seeing what happens when we do nav closed. Now if I click this, perfect. It shows up. All right, I mean, the styles aren't exactly the way we want them to be ultimately, but it's showing up. You see that we've got nav open down here in the inspector. I click it again, and it goes away. So it's exactly doing what we want it to do. Let's jump back to our CSS, and I'm going to paste to finish this up really quickly. And these are the new rules that I just made. I need to change uh, the menu button whenever nav open is present. So you can see what I did there. And I also wanted to change the anchors inside of the nav list, list items, um, because they need to be fully clickable. So display block, 
100%, 100% for width and height. Also get rid of the text decoration. I put a border on the top. All right, so just take a look at this and I'm gonna save it and we'll test it in a browser. And let's take a look and that looks so much better. Okay, so now we have a good functional menu.